today it's May 24th or Memorial Day Eve and we're doing the garden equivalent of an unboxing YouTube video. Also check out my new um, intro thing that I just did. A couple days ago on Friday, I did the video about covering your crops for cold weather. Unfortunately, uh, after I did the covering for the video, some really quite scary drama involving police and felony hate crimes came up in my neighborhood, and uh, everything that I didn't cover for the video never got covered that night. Saturday morning, the temperature when I woke up was 38 degrees Fahrenheit, that much Celsius, which is way too cold for tomatoes. Below about 46 Fahrenheit, you start to see some stunting of the growth depending on your microclimate. So I'm really nervous about what we're going to discover together in this video as we uncover my plants, which have been covered for two days. Currently, it's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, the forecast for the next week or so is just creeping up. I think the last temperature I see forecast is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, the lows at night are going to crawl up into the mid, mid 60s. Uh, I'm not going to show you that in degrees Celsius. The important thing is uh, the danger is past and well, let's go survey the damage. In that last video, I don't remember if we started with the beans, but here are my bush beans. Down here in this bed, it looks like there's more slug and snail damage to the leaves than anything else. So I'm so glad they came through this okay, because they didn't get covered at all. You can also see my eggplant up here. There does appear to be some curling to the leaves. There, I think you can see the discoloration at the leaf tip there, which may have more to do with the cold than any insect pests. So this eggplant, which I didn't cover at all, this Rosita eggplant, may have been damaged by the cold. That is unfortunate. We'll see how it grows and if it's been stunted by this. This is my first year growing eggplants, so that's too bad. In addition to the low temperatures on Friday night, we also had really high winds and this cover was blown open by the wind. So of all of the tomato plants that I covered, um, the rest of them stayed nice and covered. This one, I think my piece of fleece was a little bit unevenly cut and it was blown open. So we're going to open this plant up first and see how it did. Oh no! So this one, this tomato is one of my Hungarian hearts, which are incredible. And if this tomato is stunted, it's going to make me very sad. All right, so just looking closer at the Hungarian heart, uh, mostly what I'm seeing, I am seeing some burning around the edges of some of the leaves, um, but mostly what I'm seeing is that these poor little leaves were just beaten around inside their cover by the wind because that flap came open. So there's definitely going to be some bruised tissue and I'm going to have to watch this plant and see how its growth has been affected by what happened. If I remember correctly, this is one of the Florentino tomatoes and this is my first year growing these. So unlike the Hungarian heart, which it will be really unfortunate if it's damaged just because I love them, this one it will be unfortunate if it's damaged because I'm excited to see how they grow and you can't do that as well as a damaged plant. This plant looks pretty good. It's a little pale, 
presumably because of the light that was blocked by my cover. And it looks like I will need to do some pruning to take out some suckers that have grown up while it was covered. But aside from that, this plant it looks really good. Um, so I'm happy to report that I haven't lost all my tomatoes. In fact, um, just based on what I'm seeing here, where the cover remained intact and didn't get opened up by the wind, the leaves aren't beaten up at all either. The leaves are in really good shape. So there's no wind damage, which it turns out was something I needed to be concerned about. I've taken the covers off of all of the tomatoes now, and it looks like there is some damage from being battered around by the wind underneath their covers in most of these plants. But I don't see a lot of frost burn, so that's I'm gonna count as a big win. And also, I found that I've got some winged aphids up. I had some winged aphids up under some of the covers, so I crushed all the ones I saw. But I'm probably gonna to wanna to watch these plants for aphids now, this season. So what I'm gonna do with these plants, if uh, the ladybugs I've seen wandering around in my lettuce don't do anything about it, is I'm probably just going to spray each plant down with a mild detergent. Aphids have really soft bodies, so if you dissolve their waxy cuticle, they dehydrate really fast, and the little bugs die. Um, aphids are also something that, on a sturdier plant, you can wash off with a spray of water. I don't know how well that works on something as hairy as a tomato plant, but that might be worth trying. Make sure if you hose down your tomatoes that you do so in a way that you're not splashing mud up onto their leaves because that's going to carry diseases up from the soil and also be very careful that you do it on a day that's not humid so that the leaves dry off nice and quick. I am super nervous about uncovering my loofah gourd plants because this is my first season where I've had actual decent growth in my loofah gourds and they haven't just died off before the spring was even over. And I'm really excited about these plants and they're particularly susceptible to the cold. So this is, maybe it's not high drama for you, but I'm feeling it. I, I don't do the uh, drama voice very well either, so I'm sorry about that. Here we are. Oh, what's going on in here? How are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. That could be a lot worse. It looks like some of the tendrils relaxed and just kind of flopped down. I don't know how normal that is. <laughs> because this is my first time with this plant. I don't have a lot of experience. But the leaves themselves don't show really any damage around the margin. There's a little splotchiness on this leaf. We'll keep an eye on it and see what it does. Oh, here we are. Looks like a little bit, little bit of cold burn on the tip here. Oh, fingers crossed. And you may be able to see some of this um, leaf miner damage on my beets right now. We'll do a close up of that. This is what leaf miner damage looks like. Right here, right here. See this discoloration? There's a little, well, it's basically a maggot inside the leaf, running around, eating the soft tissue between the hard outer layers of the leaf. And I'm gonna strip these off because those leaves are now not doing the plant a lot of good. They're useful juicy insides have been pulled away. Uh, leaf, I've, I've noticed that my beets in this area seem particularly susceptible to leaf miners. And I'm guessing that's because I've got a lot of um, pigweed growing along the canal next to my house. Pigweed is a natural wild reservoir for the leaf miner fly that affects my spinach and probably also my beets. So uh, one way to control leaf miners is to make sure that the natural vegetation that supports them is cleared from your property. And it's all pretty invasive nasty weed stuff anyway. So nobody's gonna complain if you do that. You can inspect the undersides of the leaves for eggs, eggs is 
There's some. Oh, there's some. Can you see this? These little white guys in here? Let's see if I can get a closer look. This little row of eggs is what you can tell is a leaf miner egg deposit here and they will brush right off he says and then fails to do it dye eggs um, now I understand why some people prefer to use duct tape to pull them off so when you see them kill them and that will help protect your spinach and um, I guess also your beets let's see what's behind this curtain Yeah, my initial impression is that everyone's doing fine. Oh, that's not good. Right, see this? These um, these holes weren't there before I covered everything for the weather, and they've got some yellowing around them. So that could actually be a little bit of minor cold damage. It appears that I'm mostly seeing out on the older, more developed leaves, which makes me hopeful that we're going to recover from this. And I'm going to have big, happy ground cherry plants, which I'm super excited about, having never grown them before. So here's some more. And, oh, that one looks pretty bad. But overall, the plants look like they're probably fine. And in his bed we also had my random sweet pepper which isn't showing a lot of damage. These leaves were already discolored because I hardened them off too fast. So things look a little droopy. We're gonna have to see if growth is slowed down by this cold snap we had or if everything's fine and that's gonna require waiting. So this is one of the sweet peppers that I covered. I see some yellowing on the leaves. This dark color is sun scald from when I initially put the plant out. So that's not related to the cold snap we just had. But this yellowing might be. I also see that my peppers are being shaded out by the cilantro that's growing around them. And it looks like the cilantro may be preparing to bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and take a quick harvest off of the existing cilantro and then just cut it back. I have some similar shading out that's going on with some of these kohlrabi plants. So you see a little pepper in here. Aside from sun scald, this jalapeno pepper plant looks pretty good. In the spring, I'm going to want to harvest these kohlrabi once the bulbous spits get about the size of a golf ball. We're not quite there yet. But a lot of these are going to come out soon and really open things up for the peppers I have in the bed. Interplanting is going to be a bit of a compromise in this way. This plant, this sereno pepper, looks pretty sorry. So we're going to keep an eye on that and hope it recovers. Okay, this is also a sereno pepper and it looks a lot better. So there's hope. But yeah, the leaves are a little bit yellowed and slightly curled, which I'm imagining may be from the cold. Hopefully these new leaves and branches growing in are going to not be similarly afflicted and we'll have a decent plant this year. Otherwise, I guess I can buy peppers at the store because, as I stated earlier, I'm not a farmer and this isn't my livelihood. But they're so beautiful and so fun to grow and I really hope they do well. This bed I covered because I have squash that I just barely planted in it before things cooled off when it seemed like a good idea at the time. And it looks like my squash seedlings are okay. So that is good. Uh, this is a cucumber. I also have some zucchini that have come up and appear unharmed. In this bed I was surprised to see that some corn seedlings are coming up despite the fact that it actually requires really warm temperatures to get good germination. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on this and see if I get a good block of growth because I need that wind pollination to happen. If I don't get a good block of growth, I may have to just pull all these out and start over. I'll start a new block over there um, once these have come along a little bit just to be safe. And then 
if these aren't a nice regular block uh, 4 by 4 planting of corn, I'll just pull them and do it over. All of the potatoes look like nothing happened at all. Potatoes are a furry plant. They've got lots of little fuzz on them and the wind and the rain wasn't even sufficient to knock off all the dirt. So if you're looking for an easy plant to grow, consider potatoes. All right, so that is the situation in the garden after the cold snap and windstorm that happened over the weekend, Friday night and Saturday night. There was more wind damage than cold damage, surprisingly. Pretty grateful for that. I'm hoping that we can go through and see an abundant uh, season of growth and I get to show you my tomato plants growing all the way up their eight foot stakes and do that tomato pruning video I really, really want to do. It looks like they're about ready. So if you have any questions about anything we saw, please make sure it goes in the comments so we can talk about it or maybe do a video about it if it's a complex enough subject. I touched on pests and had a spot damage in, in the plants a little bit, so it might be worth going through and I'll do some book reading to make sure I'm not giving you any bad information and we might hit that subject again. Make sure if you are using agricultural fleece, fleece or mesh that you fold it up and store it out of the sun when it's not in use because it is made of plastic and so if you don't store it well you're contributing to the microplastics problem. Also it's not, it's not free you're going to spend money on it, so even if you don't care about plastic pollution, you're going to want to make that last longer and not get damaged by the sun and by stray twigs during a windstorm. Folding it up and storing it out of the sun will do those things for you. Plus, your yard won't look like a garbage dump. But that about wraps it up for today. I hope your garden grows well, and I'll see you next time.